attention? Safe? Huh? Hello, San Marcos. This is the weekly Lady Bug Out Report, San Marcos News Live, where we will discuss ways that you can prepare you and yourself and your family for urban and natural disasters. Lock it in live, San Marcos. San Marcos' own weekly news report, Lady Bug Out Series. Lock it in live, San Marcos. Sister Survival Disaster Preparation, Lady Bug Out. Okay, we're here with Stephen Sheftall and Daniel Scales, and today's topic is bug out bags. I first learned about bug out bags from Stephen, I'd say about a year, year and a half, almost two years ago. And since then, I've gotten really into the whole uh, process of preparation. Can you tell us a little bit first, Stephen, about your philosophy, what drove you to get a bug out bag, and then um, tell us a little bit about the contents of your bag? Well, uh... I guess with Boy Scouting kind of got used to the idea of only having what you could carry with you. It was uh, first experience, you know, being outside the house and not having all this gear at your fingertips. You had only what was on your back. And uh, looking at Katrina and other natural disasters, it was kind of obvious that something had to be done, at least in my my domain, to uh, be ready in, in the event something like that happened where I live. So uh, this particular bag is one I've been working on recently. Uh, the idea was to make something I wouldn't mind getting stolen, something about $100 value or less, you know, because uh, it's going to be in my truck, it's going to be what I call my get home bag, you know, it's, it's enough to get me where I need to go, but not a whole lot of bells and whistles, you know, um, just something to get me to my house where all the rest of my gear is, say if I'm in Austin or whatnot, and uh, with that, kind of go through some of the contents here, and on the, uh, the left side, I kind of go with the, the idea that, um, since we're in a primarily an urban environment, I have what I call like the whole punching side and the whole fixing side. Now this is an Israeli compress bandage and kind of did a little demo earlier of it. Uh, and I'll show you all again what it does. But it's for massive hemorrhaging, like gunshot, knife wounds, uh, compound fractures, something really horrible. So you hope you never need this, but it's really good to have if you do. And also have a pair of uh, really good EMT shears for cutting away clothing and getting to a wound site really fast. Idea being I want this close and accessible so that I can get to it right when I need it. I don't want to be fidgeting around at the bottom of my backpack while I'm losing pints of blood, you know? It's a great, uh, great point, Stephen. And on the other end, um, on the whole punching side, you know, I, I have a carry license, so of course, keep spare ammunition just because you never know. Um, spare money because, hey, let's just say I'm running out of gas and that's where my emergency starts and I just need to get some cash to get some more gas. So that's an easy way to do it. Uh, also keep some emergency silver in case I end up using this bag, oh, I don't know, a year or two from now when the dollar crashes. So, uh, mm -hmm. still have some currency no matter what. And I got a few quarters in there for, you know, air pressure, you know, paying for air compressors and whatnot. Uh, also got a bunch of parachute cord, 550 cord. Each strand, or this strand will hold 550 pounds of weight. So it's really good to use for making shelter and whatnot. Uh, also got fire making utensils, got a lighter, got matches with a piece of, um, piece of, uh, what is that, sandpaper to use to, to light them. So I've got those in a water resistant container. And for tinder I've got a bunch of dryer lint that's been soaked in petroleum jelly wrapped up. Got alcohol prep pads which ignite beautifully and the portable aqua tablets that we demonstrated in an earlier video. So that's just kind of a snapshot of what's in the outer packet or outer pockets of this bag. What do you call that that uh, component? You had two words you used. Oh, okay. Well, this is the whole uh, closing side. This is the medical side, and the spare magazines because they're over here on the left side, which would be easier for me to get to if I'm holding the weapon with my right hand. I can reach in my left and get it. And that's the whole punching side. Just kind of, you know, be ready to make holes, be ready to seal them up. At least in an <laughs> urban environment, it's quite I likely. like this. <laughs> Quite likely, unfortunately. Punch them and seal them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so here is the uh, example earlier in case uh, the demo doesn't get worked in somehow. This is uh, what one of these Israeli compression bandages looks like. And if you're looking for them on the internet, you can probably type in the term Israeli bandage and you'll come up with a ton of search results. But the idea is this. This is a civilian version. The normal ones are the military and they're green. But you'll have a compressed pad which uh, actually helps create the clot and you would wrap it with this side, so I mean just applying it right over my clothing, you know, pretending that there was a puncture there. You would just be 
wrapping it through this uh, compression bar and pulling back to create the tension you need to uh, close the wound. Very nice. And then you just wrap the gauze above and below the wound to try and create you know, a, a clotting effect. And you'll just keep going around and around. And, and the beautiful thing about this bandage is they already, uh, they have pretty much, normally you'd be using gauze pads and then gauze wrapping, and then you'd be using medical tape to seal it off, but it's all in one unit. And you can just clip it wherever you end up finding gauze, you know. It's just no effort required at all there. And it's sealed, you know. Show them the little plastic part again. Oh, this is the, uh, the sealing bar, or the... I guess I forget the technical name for it, but the closure bar, I guess, is what they call it. And you would just tuck it under part of the bandage. Excellent. And the other part is uh, the compression bar, the other plastic piece. And I just use this one for demos, so I'm never, I'm not too worried about the sterility or anything like that. It's, it was well worth five bucks just to show people what these things are capable of. One of my uh, favorite YouTube channels is Nut and Fancy, and he talks a lot about citizens as in the shepherd kind of mindset, like the shepherd dog who protects others. And right. I think that this is a wonderful testimony. You're a you're a, a blue collar worker, Stephen. I know you don't mind me saying that. Not you're at all. <laughs> food service industry. You don't make much money. Um, and he's online finding these items, ordering them with his hard-earned pay so that he could help out you, one of your neighbors or a friend of his, you know, just some random person off the street or even his own safety. Um, he's invested the time and the money, um, and I just think that's a wonderful testimony to your character, sir. I appreciate it, but uh, hopefully everyone else can, you know, get on the, even if it's not exactly like these tools or anything, because I know they're not exactly cheap and... Definitely had to save some money to get them, but... So these are some water oh, yeah. filters. Well, this is the water filter. This is just a water container. Um, this is just a cheap $9 knife I found off the website called Cheaper Than Dirt. It's, awesome. Um, I put it through its paces, and it's it's put up with some abuse. Yeah. Um, this is something you can make to make shelter. It's a bivy sack. It's just a really thin but strong uh, mylar kind of fabric. And it keeps you actually really too warm, has been my experience in Texas, but uh, in the wintertime I'm sure I won't be complaining if I ever need such an instrument. Mm -hmm. And it just stuffs right back in the sack. It's one of those few products that actually does go back in its original container. So. <laughs> those bivy <laughs> sacks are great true. to buy, to put yeah, all kinds of gear in. I've been affordable. Mm -hmm. um, talk about trying to put my sleeping bag back in the bag. What a pain. Yeah, yeah. And this is just a cool little solar gadget one of my friends got me uh, from oh, wow. his old job. Cool. And it'll charge a cell phone or an iPod. Wow. So uh, all I gotta nice. do is just kind of clip that. What is that called? It's called a Solio. Wow. And uh, they make some really cool stuff. They're a very green company. Um, wow. But I could just be walking, bugging out while charging my phone, say if uh, I had to leave my vehicle behind. Say everyone's clogging the highway and just gotta get out and walk. It's a way to keep in touch with the loved ones. Steven, if, uh, what would something like that cost? Uh, I think that retails for about 45 Excellent. to 50 bucks. The, the older model like this, you can find on eBay for about that price. Maps of where I frequently travel since it's going to be my vehicle. I've got an Austin, New Braun or San Marcos, New Braunfels map and an Austin map just because these are urban environments I'm often in. And it's where my bag's going to be because it's with my truck in those urban environments. And I have a first aid kit also at the bottom. Um, now, my thought on that is if, if I'm not losing serious blood, I can afford to dig around and look for it. So I keep it in one of these just little, you know, Walmart bags, just something to keep it water resistant, but not waterproof in the event of the rain. But uh, keep all those dressings and, and ointments pretty dry. That's a good point. Um, and last but not least, well, I guess spare filter for my Berkey there, just because you never know. Awesome. And uh, which is not inexpensive either. Yeah, they're about fifteen bucks on the internet for a spare filter, That's and, not and bad. the models themselves are about thirty. Wow. So for clean water for an emergency, you can't really beat that. And here I just have some clothes. Um, you know, a pair of old jeans that already have some holes in it, but they're pretty thick material. Uh, since we're in Texas, I'm not too worried about hypothermia, or else I would be using cotton. Uh, I got a button-up shirt here, which is mostly polyester cotton, so if it got wet, at least it would dry faster than the jeans. Um, yeah, and just you know, a pair of socks and clean undies. Mm -hmm. Socks are important. Socks are the most important, actually. If you only put one pair of any kind of clothing item in your bag, keep socks. Because if your feet go out, you get blisters, and you're going nowhere. And then you'll lose your butt. So you don't need underwear, really. <laughs> no, not really. No. I mean, if you want to make it more efficient. <laughs>